saving grace for foreign language filmmakers whose work gets hacked up in an American remake is that usually someone else is responsible for wielding the axe. So what does it mean when the filmmaker responsible for the butchery is the same man who directed the finely crafted original? The Vanishing is a psychological thriller about a woman who suddenly disappears at an anonymous service station. The obsessive years-long search by her partner. No secret. And the cat and mouse game played with him by her assailant as he desperately searches for the truth. Il y a une chose que je vais lui dire. I want to meet you. Je veux savoir ce qui est arrivé à mon ami. And I'm prepared to do anything to find out. What's unusual about the story is that we meet its villain pre-abduction as he meticulously plans and prepares his attack. It's not a who done it as much as a how and more crucially a why done it. George Slyzer's film, adapted from novella The Golden Egg by Dutch writer Tim Crabbe, incidentally the brother of frequent Hollywood Euro villain Jerome, is an implacable psychological conundrum about free will and compulsion. The idea of deliberately overriding the moral and logical quote-unquote right thing to do, at great personal cost, even survival. Ce genre de pensée, tout le monde en a, mais personne ne saute jamais. Je me suis dit, j'envisage de sauter. Comment peut-il être déjà écrit que je ne sauterai pas? Papa, papa, il y a une petite fille dans l'eau. The antagonist, mild-mannered school teacher Raymond Lamont, is actually inspired to commit evil by an act of heroism. His own daughter's admiration means he is compelled to test his capacity for the inverse. As he puts it, Je me suis logiquement représenté la chose la plus horrible que je pouvais imaginer à ce moment-là. Je m'empresse de vous dire que pour moi le pire, ce n'est pas tuer. You can probably tell from this lengthy car discussion that the final act looks very much like that old movie cliché, monologuing. When the villain has the upper hand over the good guy, but then wastes time explaining how clever he's been, giving our hero the chance to turn the tables. Watch how bored even Rex looks as Le Monde goes on and on. But that's not exactly what's happening here. I can have so door later live. Rex isn't up against Le Monde. Dan kom ik niks te weten. Of als ik haar laat doodgaan, kom ik alles te weten. As much as his own obsessive need for knowledge, for closure. En dan laat ik haar doodgaan. Monsieur Hoffman. He could easily overpower his nemesis. Je suis l'homme que vous cherchez. Call the police and guarantee his own safety. But that risks him never finding out what happened to Saskia. Et l'incertitude? Cette éternelle incertitude, Monsieur Hoffman? C'est ça le pire. So overwhelming is this desire that, ultimately, he surrenders himself to Le Monde's conditions. He will learn exactly what Saskia experienced, but only by going through it himself. So, Rex drinks the drugged coffee, and... What also makes Slyzer's original so powerful is how it questions the notion of fate, premonition even. In Crabbe's book, the unfortunate Saskia relates a nightmare she has of floating alone in the void of space, trapped in a craft shaped like a golden egg. Ja, afschuwelijk is dat die eenzaamheid. The tragedy of her abduction is that Le Monde has failed at his attempt for the day and all but given up. But then she approaches him in her typically good-natured way. C'est très joli, hein? All he sees is another chance. Ah, ça s'appelle Twill. Oui. Je veux un Twill avec un air. One he takes. It's a harrowing scene to watch. But Crabbe and Slyzer have saved the sickest surprise for last. 
Rex awakens into many people's worst nightmare. Buried alive, as was Saskia. <coughs> Finally, he knows. And as his lighter flame fades, its orange glow looks somehow Saskia. like a golden egg. Saskia! Hello, Jeff. I'm the man you're looking for. I'm Barney. The Vanishing remake follows many of the same basic plot points, but at almost every stage, it's either dumbed down, forever Diane, over the top, or misses a scene's fundamental point. Solving the disappearance of Saskia here Diane is reduced to a riddle. The misguided attempt to introduce a strong, independent female co-lead, Rita, betrays the essence of the protagonist Jeff's dilemma. Because I don't know how not to fight. The original also introduced a new girlfriend for Rex, but her presence shows how Rex can't move on from Saskia, and understandably, she leaves but that's nothing compared to why Rita is really there. As before, Jeff falls prey to abductor Barney's scheme, is drugged and wakes up entombed. But wait, here comes Rita to save the day. Although not to deliver the coup de grace. That's clearly Jeff's strike at alpha male redemption. And who needs to end a film on existential terror when you can go for a cheeky one-liner. No, no coffee, coffee, thanks. Please. We don't drink that anymore. <laughs> Everything about the US remake feels off. Even the filmmaking looks a bit hack-like. Suddenly, Slizer believes jump cuts are the way to crank up the tension. Even Jeff Bridges, one of American cinema's great actors. I've thought a lot about meeting you, Jeff. I wanted to write from the start. Sounds like he's trying to channel a Dutch accent by way of his alien character in Starman. I can't get no satisfaction. It doesn't. George Schleiser was rightly proud that Stanley Kubrick, no less, was a huge fan of his original. He saw it, I think, ten times and called me when I was working in Los Angeles. I remember that he said, you know, it's the most terrifying film I've ever seen in my life. But it's inconceivable to imagine Kubrick feeling the same about the remake. Slizer's opinions on the remake are hard to find. There's one 1993 New York Times piece where he differentiates European and American audiences as having intellectual and gut level responses respectively. The remake's producers go on to claim that US viewers need upbeat, triumphant resolutions. But more worrying is the fact that Slizer apparently signed off on the script's new ending. It's one thing to generalize an entire culture as childlike, another to readily agree to spoon feed them. Ultimately, this remake process makes one thing abundantly clear. The 1988 Vanishing is what it is, one of the most unsettling thrillers of all time, because of its themes, its imagery, and especially its ending. The 1993 version blithely junks the haunting golden egg concept, replacing it with some spurious infinity symbolism to facilitate a fanciful last act fake kidnap ruse. Sadly, this all recalls another more famous golden egg story. And in carving up what made his first film so special, Slizer's remake is that rare and salutary example of a filmmaker helping to kill his own golden goose. That's a beautiful bracelet. Thank you. That's the symbol for infinity. I told you the markup we get for these retail, you'd die. You want one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>